Here are 10 real estate photography gear hacks that will make your process so much simpler. And these are things that we've learned over literally shooting 10,000 plus houses at my business. In fact, every year we shoot between three and 4,000 houses, maybe a little bit more this year, but we'll see. And so take these from our learning the hard way and don't learn the hard way yourself. The first tip I have if you're new is to start with the gear you have. So this is the gear we use at my business and it's pretty cheap gear. There's definitely more expensive gear that you could buy, but when you're starting, you don't even need this level of gear. I have my entire gear kit linked below and start with the budget kit or with whatever camera you have. The main thing that's important is to have a wide enough angle lens. So pretty much any camera body that's not film obviously will do. Any like digital camera that you can put a wide angle lens on will work. If that camera is a full frame camera, like this one is, you can get away with a 16 millimeter lens, like you can see here at the widest. If you have a crop sensor camera, you need a wider lens. So something that goes from like 10 or 11 millimeters and then zooms in. Gear hack number two is do not use a flash. A lot of real estate photographers will use a flash to help balance the inside and outside lighting. The reality is you really don't need to do that today. So in my business, we shoot everything HDR, which if you're newer to the industry, what you basically do is set your camera up to shoot three, photos. So when I take a shutter here, when I take a photo, you'll hear it takes three photos. And what that's doing is it's taking an overexposed photo, an underexposed photo. You can see the window view is great in that one. And then a middle or correctly exposed photo. And we blend those together in Photoshop. And that allows us to balance the inside and the outside lighting without having to use a flash. And the reason I don't think using a flash is a great idea is kind of two reasons. Number one, it literally just costs money. You have to buy a flash for a few hundred dollars. That's not the biggest one. The biggest one, number two, is that it just takes more time and it doesn't look as natural unless you really do it right. If you want to build a real estate photography business that grows and where money is the goal, where you're trying to make money with this business, you want to ditch the flash. There's no reason to be using one. The next tip is to make sure to use a tripod. A lot of new real estate photographers will just run in there with their camera and hope to get good results by standing and shooting by hand. It's not a good idea. Using a tripod is going to allow you to shoot HDR like we just talked about because you're not going to be moving around. And it also allows you to have longer shutter speeds because sometimes houses are dark. And so you just need a longer shutter speed to correctly expose for the room. And sometimes you'll need a shutter speed, especially on that top overexposed bracket. That's like 10, 15, 20, or even 30 seconds in a really dark room. Tip number four is to get a camera that allows you to shoot small raw or some sort of compressed raw file. So you're obviously gonna need to shoot your photos in raw so that your editors have control over the white balance. The problem with a full size raw file is it takes up a ton of space. And that's not a problem when you're shooting because you can just get a bigger memory card. It is a problem though, transferring photos to your computer is gonna take longer. And most importantly, uploading them to your editor is gonna take a whole lot longer. It's not gonna result in any difference in the final image. So with a Canon camera, you can shoot S raw or small raw, they call it. With Sony, I think it's called compressed raw, but either way, you wanna make sure you're shooting in some sort of compressed file size so that you don't have these huge files. Hack number five is to use a geared head on your tripod. And that's what this crazy looking thing is. So most tripods will either have have like a fluid head where it's got a thing you can pan and tilt it or they'll have a ball head where you can basically loosen it put it where you want and tighten it those both take a lot longer to shoot real estate with and so using a gear head what it allows you to do is just micro adjust every axis so you're able to get straight verticals that's one of the most important things in real estate photography is making sure your vertical lines are vertical and not leaning and your horizontal lines are right and with the ball head it's kind of tough because you have to like play with every angle with this one i can specifically adjust the x y and z axis to get my camera perfectly balanced. It also has a cool bubble level on here that tells you when you're roughly level, but sometimes that'll lie to you. You will notice that geared heads are a little bit more expensive. They're a few hundred bucks, at least this Benro is, but it will make your workflow so much faster and save you a ton of time. So if you're deciding between, hey, should I spend more on a tripod or should I buy a nicer camera? If you don't have a geared head, I would absolutely spend the money on this before you even touch an upgrade on your camera. Speaking of spending money on a tripod head before you upgrade your camera, I also feel the same way about your tripod legs themselves. At my business, we currently use slick tripod legs instead of Manfrotto. And this is actually a Manfrotto tripod. When I first got into the industry, I thought Manfrotto was like the industry standard, the best of the best. And we went through so many tripods. It was like one or two a year per photographer where these joints would fail or otherwise the legs would just break. And that's pretty unfortunate because these are pretty expensive tripods. The good news is we haven't broken a single slick tripod in the last few years. 
and they're still kind of expensive but they're cheaper than a manfrotto and so if you are looking for something to spend money on definitely get a good tripod that's not going to break on you when you start shooting three or four houses a day your tripod's being put through a lot of work and they're really likely to break and so i think it's well worth the money especially to protect this thing from falling but also just because it's nicer to work with something that doesn't break and you have to order new stuff all the time so spend the money on a tripod instead of a new camera at least in my opinion hack number seven is don't get an expensive drone a lot of people say hey i want to get a good drone i'm out using it every day the thing with these is no matter how good you are at flying them they will crash eventually that's a lot worse when you're shooting with a three thousand dollar drone than it is when you're shooting with a six seven eight hundred dollar drone the reality is if you're using your drone consistently you will break it at some point and so it's better just to not risk it. Use a drone that isn't as life-changing if you break it, and you can easily replace if you have to. For the exact drone we currently recommend, you'll find that linked below in my gear. Gear hack number eight is if you're gonna offer 360 or 3D tours at your business, most people use Matterport. The hack though is that you can use a third-party 360 camera like this Ricoh Theta or some of the Insta 360 cameras with Matterport software. You don't actually have to use a Matterport camera. The thing that I like better about these over Matterport's cameras that they actually make in-house are two things. Number one, this is so much cheaper. This camera, this is a pretty expensive one. It's about $1,000, but you can get a third-party camera like the Insta360 1X3 for about four or $500, somewhere around there. And it's not even much worse quality than the Matterport camera, but it's like a tenth the cost. Those Matterport cameras can be three, four, five, six, seven thousand dollars somewhere in that range. And so these are a lot cheaper. But the second thing is these are actually true 360 cameras. So you can see it has a lens on both sides, meaning when you put it on the tripod and you take that scan, it doesn't have to physically turn to capture all of the room. The Matterport camera does. And so this takes a few seconds to do a scan where the Matterport camera takes like 30 seconds to a minute. One scan per minute is 50 minutes, whereas this one's a few seconds per scan. Say a whole lot of time. Hack number nine, especially if you're newer to real estate photography, is you don't need any extra lenses. Like you literally can just use one lens for all of your photos. We've shot thousands and thousands, well, really 10,000 plus houses on this exact lens, never having to change lenses. And the good news is most of our shots are gonna be at 16 millimeters like you can see here. But sometimes you do wanna have the ability to zoom in a little bit to get a better perspective. Maybe it's inside and you wanna show through to another room or outside for that front elevation shot. When you zoom in, it makes the photo look a little bit better. You can do that all with one lens. So a lot of other types of photography, you're used to having like different lenses for different jobs. And that's the nice thing about real estate photography. Not only do you not have to spend money but you don't ever have to change lenses like this is the setup that you use for every single shoot hack number 10 and the most important one of them all is the amount of money that you make in this industry has nothing to do with the gear you have i've seen people build awesome photo businesses ten thousand dollars plus per month using the cheapest gear of all time and i've seen people spend thousands if not tens of thousands on gear and never get any clients and so the real key is to make sure you get clients in this business so if you want to learn how to do that i have a workshop link below it's free and it will cover the instagram method which is what i recommend and use to build Build my business but that is the most important thing that you can put time into a lot of real estate photographers get so hung up on the gear that they don't spend time doing what actually matters in the business which is getting clients there's a saying i love which is without clients you don't have a company and that is absolutely true if you're serious about getting your business launched or you already have a real estate photo business that you want to take to the next level my team and i would love to work with you through one of our coaching programs you can find more info about those below in the description the really cool thing about our programs is they're not just a course it's actually a coaching program and so we get to work with you directly and develop a custom solution for you so you'll see the link to apply below you'll fill out a short application after that you'll get a chance to talk with a real live human being on my team who's going to do what we call a game plan call with you they're going to ask about your goals they're going to look into your market with you make sure this will work in your area and then give you a roadmap going forward as well as exactly how we could help you in coaching so i encourage you to check that out otherwise watch all the rest of my videos on youtube there's a ton of information there and i'll see you in the next one